What's going on guys? I've stayed at the Dalvin Cook update business because number one, the updates aren't really updates. I mean, uh, Mike Florio, the latest saying that the Jets are gaining momentum on Dalvin Cook. Um, okay. And number two, I think he does end up being a Miami Dolphin. I just think it's so hard for the Jets to match price when you figure in taxes and figure in that's where he's from. So I think the Jets would probably have to beat the Dolphins offer by like 20% uh, to make Cook want to come here. I'm not sure if that's something Joe Douglas is going to do. But I don't really understand the downside of bringing in Dalvin Cook. Now, if you don't love Dalvin Cook, if you uh, have more confidence in me that Michael Carter is going to bounce back or Bam Knight, whatever, we've been through all that. I'm not trying to change your mind on any of that. But what I will say is I don't understand the fear of bringing in Dalvin Cook. I understood it with DeAndre Hopkins. Massive risk. Bringing in DeAndre Hopkins to a two-year, $30 million deal. You're cutting Corey Davis. A big financial commitment. A big part of your team and your locker room, your chemistry, all that. But Dalvin Cook, if you sign Dalvin Cook to a one-year deal, $5 million guaranteed, what's the worst that happens? Let's say you sign Dalvin Cook to that deal. $5 million plus incentives, which I'd be shocked if he gets more. And if he does get more, it's not going to be from the Jets, almost assuredly. And let's say Brees comes back looking like Adrian Peterson, right? In a 1% outlier ACL recovery. Michael Carter bounces back. Bam Knight takes a step forward. Izzy Abanacanda comes out storming into the league as a highly productive back and says, hey, we don't even have a use at all for Dalvin Cook. He's wasting away on our bench. Well, then... Uh, just like the Jets last year, who became a running back needy team after an injury, tried to trade for Kareem Hunt, couldn't do it, and then it spent a sixth rounder that could have gone up to a fifth rounder for James Robinson. Well, then the Jets can become sellers in that same market. If James Robinson can be, can be had for a sixth uh, on an expiring contract, you don't think Dalvin Cook could be to a contender that maybe has an injury next year? And then you get up under half of his contract, and then you have a sixth or seventh round pick as a finder's fee, and it costs you two and a half million, and you got a draft pick out of it. There's no downside to it for me. So I understand he's a free agent in July. Uh, if you're not beating down the door to get Dalvin Cook, that's totally fine. But to me, the uh, the idea or the comparison to like Le'Veon Bell, Le'Veon Bell was paid millions and millions to not be a Jet anymore. That is a night and day comparison when we talk about the financial commitment. Now, let's say what's the other worst case scenario, if you don't sign Dalvin Cook and you just say, nah, we're good. Well, Brees Hall comes back uh, looking like running backs that come back from ACLs, <laughs> even the really good ones, even the young ones, even the studs, Saquon Barkley, young stud, uh, a whole year after uh, until he returned to form. Michael Carter looks like Michael Carter from last year. Bam looks like probably what he is, which is a serviceable depth running back slash special team player, and now you just have $5 million burning a hole in your pocket uh, that you could have spent to move the needle uh, in a win-now mode. Furthermore, with Brees Hall, you want to bring him back slowly. So I think there's a good shot he's active week one, but you're going to want to keep him on a relative pitch count. And let's say it's you know, Monday night against the Buffalo Bills, and you ideally they want to give Brees Hall 12 touches. And he's at his 12-touch quota, and we're heading into the fourth quarter. And, you know, the Jets are down by three, and it's first down, and they give the ball to Bam Knight, and he gets stuffed second and ten. And they're looking down at that bench, and it's the it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to keep him off the field when in every single game matters in the NFL. And Joe Douglas and Robert Tala know that there is a minimum threshold of wins and accomplishments that need to be had this year for them to keep their jobs. So I would like to remove that from the equation because in that scenario, you just roll with Dalvin Cook and you have a player who maybe the analytics say he's declining. Okay. He's not a top five, top 10 back anymore. That's fine. But if you're telling me that you could have put Michael Carter or Bam Knight behind that same Minnesota Vikings offensive line, and they would have gotten 1500 scrimmage yards and 10 touchdowns, you're out of your mind. I, I, that, that's just crazy. That, there's no way. There's no way that that's happening. So Dalvin Cook, what's the worst that could happen? We'll talk all soon.